All right, for today's project, we're going to take a regular piece of scrap lumber and we're going to turn it into this. A nice rustic beach themed plaque using stencils, layers of paint, and a couple little techniques that I show you towards the end where you can get this really nice rich finish. So come along and watch. Okay. It's Jean again, and I'm going to take you through step by step um, one of the processes that I use to create a, an aged paint finish on my tiki bar signs and beach house signs. Um, I use a lot of scrap lumber. This, it, this particular piece is a pressure treated piece of lumber. Um, I use what I have, and this is okay, like if you're going to hang it outside, it'll last longer. Um, so just use what you have locally. Um, so what you want to do is you want to cut the lumber to the size that you want and then you want to sand off the edges make sure you remove all the splinters okay now um i'm going to go through and show you the supplies that i'm going to use today so we start off with our lumber and then i have these really nice samples that i get from the local paint stores um, some of these are oops colors and they're like 50 cents a piece so that's really really nice to have. I got a big collection. Um, so anyway, you, you choose the colors you want. Now in this particular project, we're, you want to do several different shades of a similar color. Like these two samples, they're very close in color. So I'm going to be using these two colors. If you don't have two colors, what you can do is just add a little bit of white to one of the colors that you like or that you have. And you'll get two different shades of that same color. So they can, you just want them to be in the same family, okay? So two different shades of color. Um, I'm going to use white for the stencil design that's going to go on the board. And I'm going to use a gray paint mixed with water to do the antiquing wash. Um, depending on the wood you have, this, this technique using watered down paint is really, really nice. Um, before I do that stain though, I'm going to go over with my satin finish uh, water-based sealer. This particular brand I like using. And one of the things I want to remind you about the supplies that you use, you get what you pay for. So, you know, if you want to just do a couple, you know, signs for friends and family, that's fine. But if it's something that you want to do professionally, um, it's important that you use quality products. Okay, so... Anyway, Polycrylic is the brand that I use. I'm not um, supported by them in any way, but I like their product. This is, I just found this at the local um, craft store, and this is for using on my stencils. When, uh, when they stop sticking, because this is a repositionable stencil, you can use this and it makes it tacky again. So this is something I can't wait to try. I haven't used it yet, but I'm excited I have it. Um, this is the stencil material that I'm going to use. And this comes from the same company that I bought my cutter from, my stencil cutter. And it is a reusable um, material. It's very nice. And when I'm done using it, I put it back on this paper. So that's how I store them. You're going to want to have your water. And it can be a, a bucket, whatever you have. I like my artist bin. Um, I use um, styrofoam trays for my paint palettes. You can use aluminum foil, whatever you have. Plastic, plastic plates is fine. Um, you can buy these trays at the local dollar store. I found them. You can buy them new or, you know, when you um, buy vegetables and meat at the grocery store. One of my favorite brushes is my fan brush. And I have a big collection of these because I've, I've been an artist all my life, so I have a lot of artist brushes. But this can be used for all your painting. It can be used to paint the base color and everything. And I use this uh, as one of the last steps. It's called I call it dry brush technique. And you want to use a fan brush for that. So if you can go to your local, like Michael's or craft store, get a nice fan brush, you'll be happy you did. Um, another high-tech tool here is my toothbrush for doing my fly specking and spattering. Um, you want to make sure it's a nice stiff toothbrush. So just go to your local dollar store or whatever and get a cheap one, but make sure it's this, it's this, um, not a soft one. You want it to have, you want it to be able to fleck. Okay. 
uh, one of the best kept secrets for coming up with the nicest stencils, especially if you're using reusable stencils, is the makeup wedge. And I'm going to show you how to use that. But this, this gives you the best finish. The sponge um, stencil sponges that they have at the shop they're just a little bit too coarse for me. I This is like the nicest, you get the nicest finish with this. So that's what I'm going to be using. And then this is the tool that I use to get the scraped paint technique, which I'm going to be showing today. And this is actually the base for a plastic aquarium plant. <laughs> and I've been using it for years and it gives me the just the exact look that I want. So you can replace this tool with a piece of wood or a block of wood. I've done that before um, when I didn't have this with me. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got our piece of wood. I've sanded the edges a little bit just to remove any splinters. And I gave it a coat of paint. Now when that first coat of paint dries, you can hand sand or use a sander and remove uh, some of the paint from the edges. You want to expose the wood on the edges, okay? So what I want to do next is I'm going to take my complementary color, same family, just a little bit darker, and I'm going to use my paint scraper to add the texture that I was talking about earlier, okay? Okay, so I put, get the paint on my scraper. You want to have a good amount of paint on there because you're going to kind of pile it up, okay? So I'm using the scraping motion and my goal is to make the center part fairly solid because that's where the design is going to go. So I blob on as much as I can and go along the edges like that. Okay? Okay. Now we let that dry and this is the look that you get. You see? Can you see how you can just see that, that lower, that under color coming through, but then you've got the top color. Um, I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do the base color on top of this middle color. So it's three layers of paint. Just kind of pile up some paint on this palette here. Let's set this back over here. Okay. And I'm going to go back over the top with that base color, okay? See how that adds that little bit of interest? And it doesn't matter if the paint, you know, there's a little bit of the leftover paint, that's okay. That just adds to the look. Now, paint always dries a little bit darker. So this shows up really bright. It's not gonna be quite as bright, but if it was a lighter shade, that'd be okay. Um, so you wanna get that interest. When you look at this piece now, You've got the lighter shade, the darker shade, and then that the base shade. So these, these are gonna be the same color. Let's see what that looks like dry. And this is what it looks like after it dries. Now you see how interesting that is already, just the way it is? You've got a lot of visual texture, the different colors coming through, and a lot of the physical texture too, because this paint is piled up by using the block. It's nice and thick. So it's a physical texture and a visual texture. And that's what you want to go for. Now, the next step, once this is completely dry, is to add our stencil. So I'm using my reusable stencil uh, material that came from the company that I got my stencil cutter from, my Titan. Um, and what I want to do is I want to take it off the sheet. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit lower on the plaque because I'm going to drill holes and put twine, a twine hanger on this. So if I had like a wire hanger in the back, I would probably raise it a little bit, but you know, put it, put it on there so that it's balanced. I'm gonna press it on and start from the center and work your way out. Now I also, to make sure that this does not move during the stencil process, I use a little bit of painter's tape. Now this is really good too to use anytime your stencil design is near the edge, it's nice to have some tape there to make sure that your sponge doesn't go off the edge of the square and show, okay? So I've got one here and I'm going to put one across the bottom also. Like that. See, and that just gives me a little bit of space where I can get paint on this part and it'll protect the plaque. It's not 
super picky because I get a really rustic look with my plaques. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you want it to be perfect, painter's tape is your best friend. Also, you get what you pay for. <laughs> so don't go cheap on your tape either, okay? All right, now, one of the best kept secrets, like I said, is using a makeup sponge. Get the wedge, not the round ones. The wedge works the best. Um, and I'm gonna use white paint. And I'm gonna put it in my palette here. I just use my tools like that, okay? Now, to get the best finish, you wanna do light layers, okay? So you tamp off as much as you can, like that. You don't want blobs, all right? Now, with this pineapple design, I want to make it look like it's got a little bit of shadow, so I'm not going to do it real heavy around the bottom, and that way it'll be a little bit uh, darker here. So I'm going to start in the center, and you see how I'm just putting just putting paint on. It's not a lot of paint, and I'm going to run it till I'm almost out, okay? And this is kind of like the highlighted center of the pineapple. Okay, I'm going to load it up again. Tamp it off. And then I'm going to continue working my way around. Like that. Okay? And I like, I want to, I'm, I'm painting this area, but I'm not going to make it solid. And this, this white that I'm using is an off-white. It's not a pure white-white. Um, depending on the style of signs that you're doing, um, you want to pay attention to what other artists and other craftspeople are doing in that style and, and kind of get cues from them. Don't, don't copy people's stuff, um, but come up with your own version and kind of, uh, if you ever go to antique shops and that, kind of look at some of the old signs and what the true aging looks like. That's always fun too, whenever you go, if you ever go antiquing or anything like that, kind of pay attention to the real old signs. And that'll kind of give you tips on, on finishing stuff. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more paint. But you see how, see how that's just a layer, just a real soft layer? Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more and then I'm gonna take it off. I wanna make this center part as white as it can get, like that. So I'm putting the paint on a little bit heavier, a couple more layers, and then these leaves, I also want them fairly solid, okay? So with stencil, you can do it all solid, multiple layers, or get kind of grades, you know, use it um, less paint here to make it look like it's a round pineapple. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. See how that's got a nice soft finish? And it looks like it's got a little bit of shadow and then the, the highlight is in the center, okay? All right, so the next step, we let this dry and then we put a coat of varnish on it. Now, the varnish that I use, again, is the water-based um, acrylic clear satin. You don't wanna use the flat, you want it to have some kind of a gloss, okay? So what that does is it makes all the paints have the same finish and it gives you a nice rich, um, it seals it and it's all part of the, I'll show you my technique. Um, once the varnish is dry, then what we wanna do is make the stain. And what I like doing is watering down uh, grays or browns depending on the project and I kind of make a wash. So let's do that in this palette here. I've got the paint, and then I'm adding water to it. Okay, so it's just kind of sloppy, like this. And you'll practice. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna know when it's the right text consistency. It's probably half and half, half water, half paint. So then what I do, I didn't varnish here on the edges, so I'm gonna start on the edges because that's where I want the gray to settle in. It's gonna soak into the exposed wood 
and it's also going to settle into the texture of the paint and the wood itself. So I'm going to paint the entire surface. And remember, this is just watered down paint. Okay. I want to get it all on here. And if it sits on there for a little bit, that's fine. Get it on the design. Cover the entire thing like that. Now I take my old t-shirt. Old t-shirts make the best rags because they soak up water really good. And let me set this aside. I'm going to rub it like this in circles, very lightly. And then see how when I pull it, I get this, this striped appearance. And this makes it look like it's old, old, old paint. And it's been out in the weather, OK? If you want it lighter, you just rub it a little bit more. Like I'm going to uncover my pineapple here. But look at how. You see how the texture settled into the paint? And it's also absorbed into the wood, and that's what you want, OK? Look at how cool that is. So that looks like old, old layers of paint. And you can rub off as much as you want. Now, one of the things you want to be careful is, if I take this paintbrush with the wet paint and water and put it on there, it'll remove some of the stain that has settled. So you want to be really careful doing that. That's why I cover the whole thing, and I just do it like that, OK? So I rub off, you rub off as much as you want. Now you let that dry. And you see how the, the edges, what I can do too, take my paint mixture, and I'm going to paint the rest of the edges this color too. And it's, this is the same watered down, because I want the piece to have, to look like it's on an old piece of wood. So you just kind of tickle it in. See, I'm using my favorite brush. And you want to cover all the sides, OK? Then we let this dry. I'm not going to do the whole thing. OK? We let this dry. And it doesn't take very long for this to dry, OK? The next step is the fly specking. So I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use the gray, the same gray, and I'm going to use white. So what I'm going to do next is the fly specking. And I'm going to get myself set up with the gray paint and the white paint and my toothbrush. And then we'll go on to that next step. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, and I, actually I'm going to use my toothbrush. I take out the paint like this. The tip is loaded. And I do a test. I'll show you here. See here? And I did a spatter. See the spatter test? That's the look I'm going for. So I add a little bit more paint to load it up again. There we go. I do one spatter, and then I spatter the design with the gray, like that. OK? And this is what it looks like. OK? So it's you get the little bit. It breaks up the design nicely, and it adds that little layer of texture. The next step is the white. So I'm going to do the white fly spec. OK? I'm going to rinse this a little bit, because if I don't, it's not going to be as bright as I want. Dip it in the paint. OK, I'm going to do my test spatter. There we go. And then I spatter the plaque. See? Isn't that nice? Look at all the detail. Now there's one more step. And that gives it the nice, um, crusty, old look. So that's the next step. We're going to let this dry, though, thoroughly, because these are little beads of paint. So they take a little bit of time, OK? So don't you don't want to rush it. OK, so now the, the fly specking is completely dry. So the last step, remember, you've got varnish on this, so it's finished. The last step is adding what I call like a salt wash. I'm going to switch to a black tray so that you can see just how dry I get this brush because I want to um, I start off with the with the paint but I want to kind of rub it off when you do a dry brush technique that's exactly what it means is you want it to be almost dry so I'm just scrubbing it around and that's about right now I take my plaque and you see I'm holding my brush at an angle and I just kind of start tickling it. And you see how it's picking up on the texture? That's all the paint I want to add. I put it, I get it on the edges. 
and then I work my way down. Now you see how, see how it's picking up on the texture of the paint too? There we go, like that. See, it brings out all that texture. And it just gives it a rich finish. Now I'm gonna load a little more paint on. Okay, I love my fan brush, I use it for everything. I'm gonna start down here at this edge because it's the paint is a little bit heavier when you start out. So you can do like circles, you can do back and forth, which, whatever technique you're comfortable with is fine. And then you wanna brush it on these edges also. See here? And that adds it just that little bit of finishing touch makes the wood look like it's kind of beach bleached, you know, from being on the beach, beach bleached. <laughs> And I'm gonna do a little bit more on these edges here too, just to pick up that texture, okay? So you see, just these, just doing the layers and combining the different uh, techniques on your plaques is gonna give them a nice professional appearance and it'll set your plaques apart from everyone else's. So have fun with it. Um, come up with some colors that you'd like to do your, your plaques in and just um, kind of look around and see what else is going on out there. But like I said, don't copy. Just come up with your own colors and patterns and techniques and quotes and uh, have fun with it, okay? So if you have any questions, just leave comments below. And um, there we go, we've got our nice little beach plaque. I'll talk with you later.